Hello everyone, you're welcome back to another episode on Design Station Podcast. My name is Ubon, Ufot Ubon, and I host and produce this podcast. I have a co-host, but she's currently not here today. Shout out to Kems. Um, so today we're starting a new series. Actually, not today, it's been in the making, but we're just publishing it. Today, we're starting a new series titled our stories yes our stories it's still on the podcast we're not taking it elsewhere it's still on the podcast our stories so basically we're looking to create a scenario whereby uh, a safe space rather whereby we have writers and voiceover artists working together you know sometimes writers write amazing content right but then um we're looking to have voiceover artists who voice over their content on the platform so we're not just going to be having our regular interview sections where we interview great mind and great talent and amazing creatives who tell us the how the what's and the what ifs and whatnots and everything that entails in their creative journey we're also looking to have a scenario whereby should someone just want to come on the podcast and just enjoy lovely amazing stories we have great voiceover artists and we have great writers who are actually writing and people are voicing over infusing with sound designs and we're going to boom launch out with this series so we already have a particular series um launched out already and there's 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 more coming on the way we're still working on the project but if you'd love to be a part of this right are you a writer or are you a voiceover artist and you love to be a part of this you love to write and have your work you know voiced over or you'd even want to voice over your own work or you're a voiceover artist and you want to voice over other people's write-ups there's a link in the description below kindly check out that link and you know fill out the prompts and everything and we shoot on from there thank you very much i really appreciate you staying tuned now our stories is not just about publishing stories that um other writers write either fiction or you know it's not just about that our stories is also about you telling your own story so if you also just want to tell your own story it could be something that happened to you as a child you know something fun a beautiful experience something different any kind of story uh feel free to also reach out right and we're looking it's our stories it's not just about writers it heavily geared towards writers and voiceover artists but it's not just about writers and voiceover artists it's also for folks who want to tell their stories stories that you know can encourage someone can help someone stories you know a lot of persons can benefit from feel free to reach out to us right i must also mention that the podcast is rated clean right we're looking to reach all age groups so um vulgar language and all the likes of that uh definitely are going to be exempted this is also me wanting to tell my story this is one of my childhood memories that i really 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 love and it's about me flying kite so welcome to our stories design station design station design station design station <laughs> our stories amongst the most beautiful childhood memories that i have one that really gives me butterflies anytime i remember that story was when i flew kite my goodness if you did not fly kite as an adult right in your childhood days i think you missed on one euphoric experience i think so now flying kite was beautiful it was lovely but even the most beautiful thing about flying kite was we making our own kite story oh, story it's about, it's you are in for a story once upon a time i grew up somewhere around shuliri in lagos nigeria and it was always a very beautiful thing when we have holidays school holidays especially august somewhere around august um and then right uh, almost all the kids were about home it's no school sometimes we go for lessons sometimes we don't but we just were relaxing so flying kite was beautiful it was one of those beautiful things of course yes we played football and everything but flying kite was it was everything being able to create something from scratch and you see that thing just excel just it just floats in in the in the air it's energetic it gives you it gives you a lot of enthusiasm it makes you feel like that was tech back then that was tech back then for us that was tech back then but you see creating kites that can actually fly was a win because remember those days when some of our friends would create kites that wouldn't end up flying 
right for whatever reason the process of creating so let's jump right into the process of creating cards so to create a card basically you need three ingredients three basic ingredients the first is broomsticks yep that's what we used broomsticks now not just any kind of broom you know we used a particular broom that the yorubas called igbale agbako i don't know how to explain that but it's it's not the normal broom and when i mean broom i mean native broom you know this day and age now the brush that has a very long hand is called broom so broom broom native broom but this one is this one is thicker this broom is thicker and i know some of you are bulky you understand what i'm saying so I, i'm not trying to underestimate you tell your grandma to show you what a broom look like just in case the reason why we use that broom is because we want the kites to have a strong skeletal uh, skeletal system right the general broom is okay but it's not as strong as ballet Agbaku. so that's the first ingredient we need that particular broom so we cut off the head parts with blade and we cut off the tail part also with blade so it's smooth on both ends then the next ingredient you need is nylon nylon yes that's what we use nylon now the choice of nylon determines if the kite will fly or not remember i mentioned earlier that you know, it's one thing to make a kite, it's another thing to make a kite that actually flies. The choice of nylon determines if the kite will actually fly or not. So you don't want to use a, kite, a nylon that is too light, neither would you want to use a nylon that's too thick, because you actually want the kite to fly. The nylon that we generally almost always use is the nylon that houses sachet water, what we call pure water in this part of the world, right? If you buy a bag of pure water, that's white nylon that houses those sachet water good that's what we use that's the nylon we use and you know that nylon is rectangular right long rectangular so it helps us we cut the shape of the kite we cut it out for what we want and then we place our broom two broomsticks right as a like a cross a cross in between but you have to do them one after the other the first ingredient we need is broom second ingredient is the nylon and the third is thread we need thread so if after you've cut your kite shape right then you put the long broom and you use your thread to tie the top and you draw make sure the nylon is smooth and you hold and you tie the bottom then you put the other broom after crossing the tea you use the tip of the broom the thinnest part of the broom and you punch hole very careful you don't want to make too big hole make a very big hole because you really want it to fly and punch those holes in and we fire our threads in now we go to an open field this is this is one of the most blissful moments and we go to an open field and we always now you have to know how to um, navigate the wind so you always want to run in the opposite direction of the wind so somewhere around Sule, lagos if you know government college right government college eric moore state grammar those secondary school they had open field right big field so we go there and we fly our kites now if the wind is going from this direction to this direction you want to run with your kite from this direction to this direction basically if the wind is going from left it's my left yes if the wind is going from left to right you want to run from right to left you want to go you want to run in the opposite direction that the wind is blowing because as you're running your ho- you have your kite you hold your thread right long thread lots of thread lots of thread and as you're running in the opposite direction of the wind you gently release the kite and you allow the wind thick the kite the wind the wind takes the kite so you give it more thread now it has to be a very big open field very big open field because sometimes you have to run for uh, two three minutes before the kite finally takes off and when it takes off you would feel it on the thread right you you you'd feel the wind you feel the strength of the wind on your thread as you hold so you pull very gently and you release the thread very 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 gently very slowly and you just watch that kite fly you just watch it fly it's always one blissful moment when we see our kite fly in fact, one of the things we do then also was we send letters to our kites. So basically, we would 
you know, basically we don't we necessarily write anything, but we just grab a sheet of paper, just a very small piece, tear it and just place it into that, into the space of the thread and we release more thread. And surprisingly, the wind somehow takes that paper and it goes, it goes high to meet the kite. And we just see the kite right up there, right up there. And we have different kites, five, four, all of us, our kites are flying and floating in the air and it's just it's just beautiful it's beautiful to see one of our own creation just succeed truly there's no competition in the clouds right it's, it's just there it's just up there and here comes the sad part because we know that we know how to make kites we don't bring the kites down. Sometimes we do. Other times we just don't. We can we can have our kites go like... I, I can't even calculate and give an estimation of the kilometers, but it, it basically depends on your tread, right? It depends on how much tread you have. The more number of tread we release, the farther it can go. And these fields, we are big. And we just watch the sky fly. And here's the hard part. Sometimes we just have to... Cut the thread and let the kite go. Just let it go. And that was always a very sad thing to do, to be honest, sometimes because we've put in the energy, we've put in the work, and we've seen our kites fly. But if there's anything I can learn now from what I experienced then is that a community of friends, of like-minded friends, has the potential to bring about the possibilities of what you never would have even think is possible in the first place. The fact that our friends we could all come together and create kites and make kites. I know it may not be a big deal for some, but it really was a big deal for us that day, those days rather. A community of friends coming together and saying, we want to do this. And we ended up doing it and we saw it through and it, it got there. Man, that was tech. That was what design is like to us today. Another thing that it taught me is now is when we cut the thread and just let the kite go. It's not to hold on to things too tight. Because the kite in the air is fragile on its own because... The thread is not that strong, if we're being honest, right? And that's one of the reasons as to why we use thread. Not because we know it's light, but because we know the wind can actually, um, the, the wind can can flow and just carry the thread, if you will. Compared to, let's say, okumolai, the, the rope that um, the cobblers, shoemakers use in making shoe, we call it okumola then. Those are more hard, so we wouldn't necessarily use that to fly kites. So but we would use thread. The same thread you use for sewing. So we buy thread. I think then we buy three for 20 naira or so. But yeah, it, it, now looking back, it's just one of those things that teaches me not to hold, not to cling on to things too, too, too tight because you can, you can lose it, right? They, they, they had, they, um, there were times when the wind was too strong and it cut the thread on its own. The, the thread just, the, the wind pulled the kite and it just cut, a, you know, some of our kites and it does it. But at least the third thing it taught me is that things are possible. Things are possible. First, the community of friends we've got who put their mind to do things. You can do things that one person may not have even thought would have been possible in the first place. Second is not to hold on to things too tight because most everything in life is fragile. And the third is that things are actually possible. Some things are feasible. And that's my story. My childhood story. If you want to tell your story again, there's a link in the description below. This is our stories on Design Station Podcast. There's a link in the description below where you can actually tell your story as well. If you're a writer, if you're a voiceover artist, or you just want to tell your own story, reach out to us through that link and I'll talk to you there. Thank you. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Design Station. Design Station. Design Station. Design Station. <laughs>